So here's a question you might think should be easier to answer than what it actually is. And the question is this, what's the difference between coaching and counselling? Hi everyone, my name's uh, Tom Jeffs. I'm one of the directors, um, coaches and trainers at Change Your Minds Kent. And we've got this question for you today. What's the difference between coaching and counselling? It is something that uh, people do ask. Um, I work in the, the Employee Wellbeing uh, Programme at Change Your Minds Kent. And we want to just firstly let you know that uh, Change Your Minds Kent is a non-profit organisation, which means that this project, this Employee Wellbeing Project that uh, you're part of, goes to support uh, local community wellbeing projects. So, well done you, well done us. So yeah, to answer this question about coaching and counselling, maybe we can just take a look at this diagram uh, for a start. So, um, the difference between coaching and counselling, there is a lot of crossover, uh, but uh, coaching is interested maybe in the, in the present and the future. Uh, a coach will be interested in your thinking, uh, will be looking at goals, they'll be looking to challenge the way that you're thinking. Um, they're interested in your potential. Uh, usually uh, coaches are, are private, uh, it's a bit of a, a newer uh, process um, and uh, coaches are interested in kind of facilitating a process uh, for you. On the other hand, um, counsellors are interested in the present, uh, maybe the past, they're interested in your feelings, your problems, they're looking to support you to find some peace. Um, counselling is available on the NHS. There is a, a higher evidence base for counselling because it's been around uh, for longer. Having said all of that, there was a big mix up because of course, um, counsellors will challenge you um, and coaches will support you. So there is, a, there is kind of crossover there. So here's an analogy which might be helpful. Imagine you're a car uh, and there's something wrong with you or something wrong with it. Uh, you take it to a garage to fix it, wouldn't you? Maybe it's a puncture. I don't know, maybe your exhaust is hanging off. Um, maybe you've been in a car crash. Um, well, you know, that would be counselling. You know, something's happened to you and you want to get it fixed. A coach, on the other hand, is a little bit like having a car you like to upgrade. Uh, maybe you want better grip on your tyres, better brakes. Maybe you want to supercharge your engine because you want to be able to go further and go quicker. You know, souping up your car because you'd like to get somewhere. Maybe where you want to go is off-road and you need some of those, uh, you know, monster truck tyres. Well, you know, that's coaching. Uh, and sometimes in coaching and counselling, we find out that one of the reasons our car is so smashed up or it's not working very well is because we're actually doing it to ourselves. You know, and a counsellor and a coach can help you see that certain ways of thinking might not be that helpful for you. So I've just got some questions here from some random made up people um, that I've just made up. Bob asks this question, do counsellors and coaches give advice? Well, Bob, the answer to that question is no, they don't, or certainly they shouldn't be. Um, counsellors and coaches will they've kind of learned over the years that uh, giving advice doesn't work very well. But what they do do, do, do is they create a space. Uh, a counsellor would create a safe space for you to explore what's going on. A coach, we might say, creates a, well, it could be a safe space, but maybe a creative space to kind of look at what the kind of potential opportunities are. Um, Steve asks, tell me more about confidentiality. Counselors and coaches work within a, a, an ethical framework. Uh, confidentiality is really important. It's really important that, that you as a client feel uh, comfortable to talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. The only exception to the confidentiality is if you're at serious risk of harm to yourself or others. And what that means is that basically if you're suicidal or homicidal, you know, a coach or counsellor is not going to carry that. They're going to look to kind of bring other people in to support that situation. If uh, suicide is something that's uh, unfortunately on your agenda and it is, you know, it is an issue uh, for some um, intermittently, I would say counsellor is probably a good person to speak with. Um, and we'd also probably say that in a crisis situation, then confidentiality is put to one side for your safety. And you know, they would look to bring in um, other people. Amanda, we've got a question from Amanda here. Amanda says, um, tell me, you know, how do we start this process? Well, counselors and coaches, they both have a process. A 
counsellor maybe would start with a, a bit of an assessment, sort of see if counselling's you know the right fit for you. Um, in, in, with coaches, we would say we'd have a chemistry session to begin with, just see if we gel. You know, see if uh, see if it's a right fit. If it doesn't feel right for you, it's really important. Don't give up on the process. You just need to find the right person. So hopefully this has been a helpful video for you. Um, hopefully we shine a little bit of light on this question. And I'm also hoping that maybe we might see you in some one-to-one -one sessions sometime soon. Take care.